I'm Sharla with Freezer Meals 101. Welcome to my channel. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. I'm really enjoying getting to know you guys in the comments. And if you're not a subscriber yet, then I welcome you to join if you're looking for uh, freezer meal recipes or just easy family recipes or meal ideas, tips for the kitchen, that kind of thing. So today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing keto freezer meals. And the reason for that is that my husband has decided to go keto again. This is his third time. And I have to admit, I'm not the biggest fan because I prefer it if we can all eat the same thing at the same time. And I am not a vegetarian, but I'm close to a vegetarian, so I don't, eat a lot of meat and especially um, beef I don't eat. So that's something where it's difficult if he's eating a lot of meat and I don't eat a lot of meat. So it's hard to combine those two. But I have to say he's been really good about making meals for himself and not complaining that he can't eat what the rest of us are eating. And he's actually invented a keto chili recipe that I hear from the kids is absolutely delicious. It's huge favorite around here and um, it means that when he goes and makes himself a giant pot of chili thinking that he'll have enough food for the week it doesn't last as long as he'd like because the kids are pillaging it so that's one of the things I'm going to make today and I'm gonna freeze those in one cup serving sizes so that he can take one or two out at a time and that way he can protect his chili a little bit better. I'm sure he'll share some with the kids though too. I'm also making him a bunch of other keto freezer meals and I hope it's gonna work really well, but who knows. Um, the other thing that's a little bit different about today is that usually uh, I do my prep ahead and I'm really organized and I can just bang the meals out. And today things haven't really worked out that way. There's been a lot of appointments for the kids and I have some more appointments today and tomorrow. And so I'm actually breaking this up and doing a little bit at a time. And the reason that I'm sharing that with you is because I wanna show you that you don't have to make this thing perfect to do freezer meals. It doesn't always have to be like the way that I teach you where you do all your shopping and prep ahead and you're really organized and know exactly the order you're gonna do things and you lay out stations and like that, it doesn't have to be that way. You can be really successful at making freezer meals just in the time allotted or the time that you have. So what I did is this morning, I had a little window, about a half an hour, and I did a tiny bit of prep, but I did not finish the prep. And then today I'm gonna to get as much of it as I can and I'm gonna be okay with that. <laughs> I know I'm not gonna finish it all and that's okay. That's just where we're at. So tomorrow I'll do some more and I didn't even get all the groceries I had. I picked a few things up without having a list. I just thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna be a nice wife. I'm gonna make some keto freezer meals for him. And like, so I'll get some ground beef and ground pork and you know, just, I and some veggies. I threw things in the cart, not really having a plan. And now that I've made a plan, I realize that I need a few more things. So sending my husband out to grab some more of the groceries today, and then I can work on those things tomorrow. So what I've got prepping is I have bacon in the oven. And um, if you've watched here for a while, you know that I have kind of a method for doing bacon where I can fit two or two and a half packs of bacon on a single baking sheet. So I'll link the video above for that if you want to see how to do that. And then behind me, I've got uh, four, no, five packs of ground beef that are um, browning and they're almost done browning. So I've actually turned it down. And the first thing that I'm going to make while those are going, so that um, the bacon is going to be for two recipes and including the keto chili and the ground beef is going to be for the keto chili and one or two other recipes as well. So what we're gonna work on while we wait for those is some keto Italian meatballs. Now I'll link the recipe for that and all the other recipes below in the description. So, but you know, join me as I attempt for the first time ever to make these meatballs. And I actually have never made any meatballs from scratch. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
and I'm not that excited about touching the meat. <laughs> so I might go grab some gloves for that part, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm just opening these packs. It called for ground beef and ground pork, and I found these combination ground beef and pork at the grocery store. It really touched me. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be washing my hands a lot because ick. But there we go. So we got that, and then we have half a cup of matzo cheese that I measured out before, and half a cup of parmesan. It called for a quarter cup, but I had half a cup left in my container, and I just thought might as well use it all up. And then I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And the recipe calls for garlic powder, but I figure that actual garlic is going to be better any day. I don't know if that's true with meatballs. Now that I say it out loud, I'm like, oh, maybe it's supposed to be powdered for texture. But anyway, we'll know soon enough. So I'm adding in some garlic. I just have the jar of minced garlic, giant jar, that I use for a lot of our freezer meals because it's faster. And two eggs, which I think I'm gonna do everything but the eggs first. So, uh, let's see, a tablespoon of dried parsley, and now that I'm reading this, I realize I did not chop onion at once, finely chopped onion. I didn't do that yet. I guess I'm gonna do that with you guys. So we're doing uh, how much? Two tablespoons of heavy cream or whipping cream. So this is 33% elk fat uh, whipping cream. So I'm doing two tablespoons of that. And with these Italian meatballs, you could serve them with a um, tomato sauce. Now I know with keto tomato, you don't want a whole lot of tomato or some people don't want any at all. On, in this recipe, it calls for Rouse sensitive mar marinara sauce. I'm assuming that's some kind of keto friendly marinara sauce. I have no idea. But you can serve these with any keto friendly sauce. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a marinara sauce or a tomato sauce. And then I'm going to do dried basil. It says two teaspoons. Because I don't know this recipe very well, I'm not much of a measurer, but since I don't know what I'm doing, I think I'm going to measure just to be on the safe side because I've already <laughs> taken that liberty with the minced garlic, so I just want to be extra careful with everything else. And that is actually it other than our tomato paste, eggs, and the finely chopped onion, which I did not chop yet. So, eggs, and ooh, um, tomato paste, which is going, okay, I gotta wash my hands, they're icky. They touch the meat and they have egg on them. So, I'm sorry, but I'll be right back. Okay, so for the onion, I'm just gonna go ahead and do half of a really small onion here. And it wants two tablespoons, so that's going to be actually just about right. All right, perfect. So we'll throw that in there. And I didn't cut any more onions at the same time because the rest of the onions I'm doing will probably be chopped rather than minced. But I'll still use my new chopper, which I'm so happy with. Okay, and tomato paste, two tablespoons of that. So I'm just going to do my electric can opener, be right back. So I thought I would check the bacon and the ground beef while I was at it. 
Okay, so two tablespoons of tomato paste. And I know I need a little bit of tomato paste later for the chili, so I'm just going to uh, leave it out. Okay, so now comes the icky part. I think I'm gonna stir it with a fork first before I get my hands in there, but from everything I've been reading, and hearing, I think hands are key when it comes to mixing up your meatball mixture. So, do this first, and then I'll get my hands in there. Ugh. Mind over matter, right? I can do it. I know I said mine never matter, but I just was thinking, I, I think I've got some latex gloves under the sink, so <laughs> I'm gonna put some gloves on. That way I'll be less squeamish and this will probably go a little better. We'll see. Okay. I guess I'm going to get in there. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not doing this with my bare hands. Yep. This texture wise would be a problem for me to be touching with my bare hands. Okay. But if you want to get in there and get messy, you go right ahead. So, I'll show you, I think my husband's really going to like these. I probably should have gotten double the meat because it would have taken about the same amount of time to double this. It would have taken a little bit more time to actually make the meatballs, like to roll them out, but it would have taken no time at all to mix it if it was doubled. So, if he likes it, maybe next time I'll double it, but anyway. Since this is my first time doing the keto freezer meals, I'm just gonna, you know, go with some of the recipes that we've, or, I'll just cut this part right out. Okay, so that is our meat mixture. And now I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet. The reason I'm doing them onto a cookie sheet is I'm going to freeze them flat in the freezer and then add them to the freezer bag. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I um, want them to be able to take out just a few at a time and I don't want them to stick together. So that's the key if you want to freeze things flat. So I didn't have, I have a cookie scoop, but it's small. so. I'm using an ice cream scoop so that they're kind of approximately the same size. I wanted to make large meatballs. I don't exactly know with keto, like, he can't have spaghetti and meatballs. I guess he could make, like, that zucchini noodle thing as a pasta with meatballs. Or he could make some kind of a savory meatball sauce. Mm, whatever. He can think of how he's going to eat them, but I know that he'll like them. He really likes meatballs. Like pre-keto, if we would go to a restaurant, he often will order meatballs. So, Again, this is my first time ever making any kind of meatball, keto or not. So I don't actually know if I'm rolling them right. Like if you're actually supposed to like roll them and make them really tight, I have no idea. So I hope I'm doing this right. If I'm not, you can let me know in the comments. <laughs> and I'll know for next time. But they seem to be kind of staying together okay, so hopefully it's all good. So we ended up 
with 31 pretty decent sized meatballs. I'm going to lay those flat in the freezer and wash my hands. And then I was able to take bacon out of the oven and the ground beef is ready so we can start putting together that chili. Okay, so now we are going to attempt to make this chili that is my husband's invention that apparently is very good. And so, like I said before, I haven't prepped everything, but we'll just go ahead and you can watch me cut vegetables. I'll fast forward those parts so that you don't have to be super bored, but we're just gonna use a giant stock pot. Like I said, I'm doubling the recipe, so we can hopefully use a lot. And today, for the first time ever, I'm gonna try something called super cubes. Um, the lady that she and her husband invented them, she's actually in my Freezer Meal 101 group on Facebook and she's shown some pictures of them in use and I just figured I'd give it a shot because this will be a perfect way for me to be able to freeze them in one cup portions and he can pull out one or two at a time. So we're giving that a try today, it's the first time ever. Uh, I have done a video on um, how to freeze, uh, her how to do freezer meals for just one or two people and I didn't have super cubes, so I didn't use those. So it'll be interesting experiment to see if this works. And the next time that I do freezer meals for my mother-in-law or my dad, um, we'll see if I end up using them, if I like them today. So uh, this is celery. I'm gonna throw that in there. I'm allergic to celery, so my daughter cut these for me this morning. And I am putting some of the mushrooms in this other container for another recipe, but we're gonna use this, which is still an awful lot of sliced mushrooms. So we're gonna toss those in there. And then we've already browned our beef. It's behind me, so I'm just gonna scoop in the beef. So we have our beef in there. Now I'm going to add the bacon. And to do that, I'm just gonna cut it with kitchen scissors. Where did I put them? Oh, here. I just washed them in between because they had been used to open the packages of raw beef. <laughs> okay, hold on, I've grabbed the bacon. Okay, so it's slightly cooled so that I can handle it, which is great. And just squishing it in some paper towel to make it a bit easier, not as greasy when I cut it. And, oh look, it's like a little ice cream cone. Okay. We're just gonna snip that directly into our pot. So, my husband says that this recipe, the key is texture because he says since there's no beans in a keto chili, you want to make sure you get lots of different textures in there. So he says that's the first key to this recipe. And the other one he said is letting it simmer for three hours so that the flavors all have a chance to really meld and come together. So we're gonna do that. So I don't know about keto chili, but the key to regular chili is onions. Lots and lots and lots of onions. So I'm adding onions to this too because it is part of his recipe, but I'm definitely gonna be generous with the onions. So to chop the onions, I'm actually gonna just change out this minced for the um, diced. But before I do that, I'll actually make some space for my chopping here um, by adding the other ingredients to the chili and just so that we can get them out of the way and clear some room here. So um, I'm going to add two tetra packs of beef broth. I just poked a hole because then you don't get that like glug, glug, glug when you do your broth. Woo! And we are doing, it's supposed to be six 
um, cans of tomato paste, three cans for each recipe. But uh, we have most of a can left from that last recipe, so I'm just gonna use five and like three quarters cans and that should work. I'm again gonna go over and use the electric can opener because then I can do other things while the cans are opening and it saves my wrists, so. When you have tomato paste, these teeny tiny little spatulas are awesome, although then sometimes you get a notch in your spatula from the little can opener spot. So that's the only caveat there, but it's still a great way to get all that tomato paste out. I'm just gonna add some paprika, chili powder, cumin, and cayenne. He didn't give me measurements, so I'm just going to guess. And it should be fine because there's so many flavors in there, it's all gonna meld really nicely. And with chili, you want bold flavors. So uh, with cayenne, you can skip it if you don't like things spicy. Same with when we add jalapenos later, you can totally skip those if you don't like things to be spicy. This is our chili powder. So I would say add double the chili powder to what you added of everything else. But I will, um, I'm gonna write this up on the website and then I will link, once that's written, so in a week or so, I will link that recipe in the description below and I'll have all the recipes that I've used today linked in the description below so that should help. And in that one, I'll get him to write the exact quantities so that we're not just guessing. Okay, I'm also gonna do some salt and pepper. And then we're gonna get to chopping our onions here. Now, I have started using this uh, food chopper. It's called Sid Hume. And Christy actually got one for when she was chopping onions for our freezer meals. She did a full video, you can watch that up there. Um, on chopping onions with this method and how it was faster than the last method we were using because she does 40 cups of onions at a time, or 40 onions, I should say. So um, that was, she's got a video on that. But I've since borrowed hers. She just lives two doors down. So usually when we borrow each other's things, we just, you know, one of us buys it and we don't bother buying a second one because we can just use the other person's. But with this, I borrowed it and then realized, like, yeah, I don't wanna go back to chopping onions the regular way ever again. So I've bought myself one, just so that I'm not always having to ask to borrow hers. So I switched it out. I switched the, um, the minced for the diced. So th these are going to be larger chunks than the ones that we put in those meatballs. And I just went ahead and peeled some onions and cut them, some of them in half and some of them in quarters, depending on the size of the onion. And actually one onion was so giant that I had to <laughs> cut it into eighths to be able to fit it in here. This is it here. So, woo, some of these are potent. Sorry if I start crying on camera. This is so fast and it's kind of fun. It's like, if you have frustration or something, you wanna get that out, you can just be like, darn that person that's giving me a hard time. See, get all those frustrations out. Okay, it's getting kind of full. Maybe I should empty it. Okay, normally I'd be emptying it into a container, but for today, I can empty it right into our chili pot. I'm wondering if that might be enough. It might be. I'll give it a stir and see what I think. Because like I said, with chili, you want lots of onions. 
Okay, but we're gonna cut these anyway because we've got other recipes coming. And they call for onions as well. I didn't like that piece. Oh well. This is brilliant. Should have had one of these years ago. Okay, onions are done. Now we're gonna do green pepper and zucchini and jalapeno. I'm gonna grab the jalapenos from the fridge. I feel like I really should have asked my husband how big to cut the jalapenos. I don't know if they're like tiny diced pieces or tiny little, you know, pieces that mix in or if you want them large enough that you could pick it out if you didn't want spice. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to grab my compost bucket. Now that it's spring, we've got a big compost pile in the back. And so this morning I've been throwing all the bits from those mushrooms and celery and onions that we already prepped into here. And so I'm just going to continue and then I can have one of the kids walk that out to the compost pile in the back and not be making as much garbage. So we're going to do two green peppers. I washed them already and we're just doing like one per recipe. So because we're doubling it, we're going to do two. Now I'm dicing these fairly large because again, my husband said that texture is an issue and you wanna make sure that you really have those like chunks in the chili because you're missing the beans. So I'm making sure that whoever's eating this is going to actually be able to taste the chunks of vegetables. a third green pepper a little bit smaller because I need it in one of the other recipes that I'm going to be making and now I'm just cutting that zucchini so I'm gonna be adding two zucchinis or maybe one and a half depending on how large they are so and again make it pretty chunky and then just toss it right in actually decided to just do the one zucchini based on the size and that I'm starting to not quite run out of room but I want there to be enough room for me to stir it really easily so we still have to put the jalapeno and garlic so not that garlic takes up much space and because we doubled the recipe I'm going to add a full jalapeno now again with the jalapeno you can skip it all together or you can take the seeds out to make it less spicy or you can add half the amount that we're adding really this is one of those recipes that you can customize it to your taste if you don't like mushrooms then don't add the mushrooms <laughs> so it's just um because it has so many vegetables in there which is great because it's healthy but you can omit the ones you don't like or add extra of the ones you love. Okay, I'm gonna grab a spoon to stir it and a spoon for the garlic. I changed my mind. Don't love doing extra dishes, so I'm just going to stir it with the ladle that I used to add the ground beef into it. So I'm adding a fairly large scoop of minced garlic. It should be about the equivalent of probably five or six cloves garlic again for the doubled recipe oh I'm so glad I didn't make this any larger it is going to be a beast to stir okay I'm going to give this a stir and then I'm gonna get it on the stove and again we're gonna cook this 
for three hours, simmer it so that all those flavors are really nice and melded. And then I'll show you guys when I'm scooping it into those one cup portion sizes. I'll also, I'll probably run out of those one cup things. So I'll also probably put some of it in medium size resealable freezer bags. Uh, I actually have some silicone ones that I've been wanting to try and they would be about the perfect size for this. So I will do both if I run out of the one cup super cube things. Um, yeah, and I will be back to do our next meal, which is a keto taco casserole. Oh, I'll show you. I'm gonna give this a little bit more of a stir and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's where we're at. I don't know if you can see that better or not, but hopefully you can. I'm short, so I'm up on my tippy toes. Uh, there you go. I'm going to put this on the stove now. So before we make the taco casserole, I'm just going to show you um, putting the meatballs into freezer bags. So they are now frozen because I lay them flat and froze them. I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can either bake these before you freeze them and then freeze them or you can freeze them raw. I'm choosing to freeze these raw because I just think they'll be more versatile for my husband if he can grab out a few at a time and bake them up fresh and then add whatever sauce he wants to do or put them in whatever dish he wants. So I'm just adding them in to freezer bag and again because they were frozen flat this will make it so that they don't stick together in the freezer and he can grab out just one or two or three at a time I'm gonna do two bags because I want it to be able to lay or take up as the least amount of space in the freezer as possible so and the other reason that I'm using two bags is because with any kind of freezer cooking, air is the enemy and you want to make sure that you can get as much air out as possible. And if I do two layers of those, it's going to be really hard to trap out that extra air. So I'm going to do two separate bags, even though this doesn't look like a full bag. And then we will take out as much of that extra air as we can. That's pretty good actually. And this is ready to go in the freezer. This taco casserole is a real experiment because I've never made it before. It is from mindovermunch.com. So again, I'll link the recipe below. It is in layers. So I'm going to do it in a dish like this. It's not the most practical because then my husband will have to eat it. Like you can share it with the kids, I guess, or you can eat it all week long. I don't know. Anyway, but so I've got the green pepper that I chopped earlier, and then I'm adding um, cauliflower rice, just frozen cauliflower rice. And in this layer, I'm also doing some onions. So it says about a three quarters of an onion. So I'm just gonna grab a handful there, maybe two handfuls, and taco seasoning. So. One tablespoon. Which is about like that. Okay, and we've got a stir. And this cauliflower rice layer is the bottom layer for this casserole. And, oh, maybe. 
Let me double check that. Yes, it is the bottom layer. Okay, we're throwing this cauliflower rice mixture on the bottom. So I guess it's like the vegetable mixture because it's got those green peppers in there and onions and the seasoning. So get that all layered out. Now, or spread out, I should say. I'm a little flustered, I have to tell you. I'm gonna have to cut so much of this video out. Most of my kids are home today and they have been in and out and in and out because spring is finally here and they're enjoying spending time outside. They're making a bike jump outside. And so they've been having a lot of fun, which I love, but <laughs> it's been a lot of, if I don't edit it out, you're gonna hear the door open about a hundred times. So uh, the next layer is, it said you could use chicken or beef and I chose to use beef because again, I was browning it earlier. It's just easier again to use like ingredients because your prep time is cut in half if you're using it for multiple recipes. So um, I'm using the beef instead of the chicken and then it says to use more onion in that. So go ahead and just add some onion in here. I could have cooked the onion with the beef, but I didn't need it that way for the other recipes, so I chose not to. But we'll see how it goes here. Again, this recipe is really an experiment. So now we're doing a can of diced green chilies and two thirds of a cup diced tomatoes. This came from a can. So we're gonna add that in there and I'm going to open the green chilies. And we're going to add another tablespoon of taco seasoning into this layer. And we'll give this a good mix. It's probably more than a tablespoon, but I'm sure it will be fine. Okay, because I'm not familiar with this recipe, I keep double checking it and triple checking it, so I'm sorry that I keep looking down at the recipe. When it's my own recipes and I'm familiar with them, I can just chat with you and not worry about double checking the ingredients. But with this one, you know, like I said, I'm not familiar with it. So, uh, so this is the next layer, I think, but I'm double checking. Yes. So this layer is going to go next. And then we're going to layer some sliced black, black olives. If you don't like black olives, you can skip this, but I know my husband does. Actually, two of our kids love black olives, like have since they were babies, little babies. It's like their favorite. So, to this day. Um, so a layer of black olives. And then, I'll just show you what it's looking like so far so that you can get a better look. I know that with this giant plug on my island, it's sometimes hard to get a good look at what I'm doing. So there you go. And then, I'm gonna top it with some cheese. It calls for shredded cheddar, but I'm gonna use a habanero blend that is pre-shredded because I didn't have cheddar and because my husband does like things spicy, so he won't be bothered by the extra spice. Tricky thing when you are putting um, something like this in the freezer that's layered. And I generally don't because I don't like how much space these big containers take in my freezer. So I usually use the freezer bags. But if you have to do a layered dish like this and it has to be in a container like this, the trick again is with the air. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the first layer of foil so that it's actually down touching the food and then the next layer of foil just over top. 
And then when you bake it, you can go ahead and take away that um, layer that's right on the food because of course you don't want the cheese sticking to it. But, or you can spray it with some spray and then have it that way and the cheese won't stick to it when you bake it. Anyway, that is the trick for making sure that there isn't any extra air that would cause freezer burn. So this one is done. We've got our keto taco casserole. We're actually moving along pretty well today. I think I'm gonna stop for today and finish tomorrow and I'll do the chicken meals tomorrow. That way I can get everything cleaned up from today. And like I said, I don't have giant chunks of time this time, so I'm breaking it up over a couple of days. So yeah, I'll just add this on to the end of the video. I was gonna say, join me tomorrow, but I guess it's all gonna be in one video. So I will see you right after this. Hi, and it is day two of the keto freezer meal thing. So today I'm going to be splitting it into a couple parts again, because I don't have giant chunks of time. So I thought this morning what I would do is attempt to make keto pancakes. So my husband has never done these before, and so I don't know if they'll be good. I haven't made them before, but I've looked up some recipes online and this one had good reviews. So we'll give it a shot. This one is made with coconut flour. There's lots of recipes you can find with almond flour, but we have a daughter that's allergic to tree nuts. And I often have pancakes in the freezer, so I don't want the kids to see these and her to accidentally mistake, you know, the keto ones and have an anaphylactic reaction. So obviously coconut flour is the only way to go here for us. So um, I'm actually quadrupling this recipe and we will see how that goes. So it calls for a quarter cup of coconut flour. So that's gonna be one cup since I'm quadrupling it. And three large eggs, which is going to be a dozen eggs again, since we're quadrupling and two tablespoons olive oil so again quadruple and two tablespoons maple syrup or a sugar-free keto-friendly syrup so in our case we're using this no sugar added syrup that my husband had ordered on amazon and then never used <laughs> so we're going to be using it now for his pancakes and then Baking powder, one teaspoon, so four teaspoons since we're quadrupling, one teaspoon vanilla, so four teaspoons again, and a little bit of sea salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that all to this bowl, mix it up, and then we'll put them on this griddle here. And I'll let you know a trick for um, whenever you're gonna freeze any kind of pancakes. going to spray this griddle and we'll get these on there. I don't know how large to make these, so just pretend like they're regular pancakes and see. I quadrupled that recipe because this is not going to make very much at all. I actually had taken out two bowls because I was like, if I quadruple it, I might need two bowls, but nope, this is a very small recipe actually. So I would suggest at least doubling it, if not quadrupling it or making even double what I've made. Uh, so I guess we're just gonna flip them when you would flip a regular pancake, which is when bubbles start to form on the top. So hopefully this works. You're all along on this experiment with me. Now, just like yesterday when we made the meatballs 
and we put them on a cookie sheet and lay them flat in a single layer in the freezer. We're gonna do the same thing with the pancakes and it's for the same reason. We want them to first freeze individually and then we'll add them into a freezer bag so that when my husband goes to take one out or two out or whatever he wants for breakfast or brunch or whatever, um, then he, they won't stick together. So that is the trick for doing anything like pancakes or waffles where you're wanting to take out just a few at a time is you wanna freeze them flat first on a cookie sheet and then you can go ahead and put them in a freezer bag and they will be all ready to go for the morning that you need them. And then if you want, you can pop them in the toaster or the toaster oven so that they're cooked nicely and don't get soggy like they do if you put them in the microwave. But if you like soggy pancakes, you can go ahead and microwave them too. Okay, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and I'll speed that part of the video up for you again so that you're not having to watch like three hours of me making keto recipes. You can get the general idea and we'll see how much it makes. And then we're actually going to take that keto chili that we made yesterday and last night I scooped it into those super cubes and froze it. So I'll show you how those turned out and we will transfer those into a uh, freezer bag. And uh, yeah, I think apparently the, the chili was delicious. I did let it simmer for three hours and uh, several of the kids and my husband had it for supper last night. And according to my husband, it's about as good as his. <laughs> so he did add his secret ingredient which is a hot sauce that's homemade by his friend's dad. So um, that's not something that I can give you the recipe for because that's like an old family secret recipe from their family. So anyway, um, I will just keep making those, go grab those chilies out and then we will get to the next thing here. pancakes. Really glad I quadrupled that recipe. That is not very many pancakes. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to um, transfer half of those to a second cookie sheet and put those in the freezer and I'll be back to do the chili super cubes with you. Okay, so last night I froze these in these super cubes. I like the little, it's like a limited edition sprinkle one. There's blue and pink. They came in sets of two and I bought two sets. Anyway, what I liked about them, I sound like I'm doing a product review, but I have no affiliation with Super Cubes. They're not paying me anything. I'm just letting you know what I think because it's my first time using them. What I liked is in each of these cup, one cup um, cubes, there was a half cup measure and a one cup um, measure so I could have done half a cup and so I like that I didn't know that that would be like that um, I actually had wanted to buy the two cup because then I could make larger cubes I just thought that would make more sense for this but they were sold out so apparently they were on Shark Tank and so got really popular and with the pandemic everybody's been cooking from scratch and learning to be in their kitchen again so I can already tell these are gonna come out super easily look at that so woo! I was trying to do that without touching it but well, I think maybe I'll just have to touch it okay those came out so easily so we're gonna put the cubes in a bag and this way I can use this Oh, this one doesn't want to come out as well. Maybe it's because I've had them sitting here thawing a little bit. Okay, it's better if I don't touch them. 
And that's what I'm discovering. But then how to transfer them? Hmm, this is quite the dilemma. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, we have two cubes in there. So I think this is gonna work really well. And then I have a soup that I'm going to make so I can use this to freeze that soup and make a keto soup for my husband. And then again, in the individual cubes so he can have his own dinner. And that way I don't have to feel guilty. Not that I really feel guilty, but um, I don't have to feel badly at all if we're eating something for supper that he um, can't have on his keto diet. Okay, there has to be a better way to do this. Yeah, that one kind of came apart a bit. But again, I had them sitting out on the counter here, so I think that's why. Anyway, those came out really easily. Now, I would suggest if you're going to make them that obviously you transfer them as soon as you get them out of the freezer. And also, um, I don't know if it needed to be in the freezer longer because I just put them in last night and it's morning, so who knows? I didn't do any reading up on it or anything. Oh, look at this. This one is more frozen, because, and I can handle them. Can take them right out. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I think why that is, is because it was not on top. So that one on top was kind of thawing a little bit as I sat here, because this one is easy to take them out, and I can even grab them. Yeah. This is lovely. Okay, this is the way it's supposed to work. Um, I'm not sure if I can fit this one in. Yep, it's like a puzzle. Okay, so I have my super cubes of keto chili. And we're going to take all the air that we can out. My hands don't want to work because they're so frozen. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. Ah, they're a little more cooperative. Get as much air as we can out of the bag. Close it up, and I'm gonna pop that back in the freezer, but before I do that, I want to label it, because obviously, you want to know what you're eating and also when it went in the freezer to make sure that you don't keep things too long. I would say for a keto chili like this, it would be safe in the freezer for three to six months based on everything I know about freezer cooking. Okay, so I'm going to pop these in the freezer and do another bag. Actually, maybe I should just pop them all in the freezer at the same time. No, I'm going to get them frozen. I don't want them to lose their shape. Oh, here, maybe you can see now how it has the one cup measure and the half a cup measure. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully. Anyway, so I found that that was really handy and it, it has it in milliliters on the other side, 125 and 250. So this, because I bought four sets or two sets of two, um, I was able to make 16 of my chili squares and that was with that doubled recipe, but there was some leftover, plus my husband and some of the kids ate it for supper last night. So it came up to obviously more than 16 cups for that doubled recipe. But this is great because he will have 16 meals or <laughs> less if the kids pillage his stash, which they might. Okay, those are pretty strange looking, but I think they're going to be super practical. So I'm off to throw these in the freezer, and then next time I come back to the kitchen, we will be doing some keto chicken meals, and we'll see about that. Okay, so it is the afternoon, and I am back, although in your video, it will seem like I was just here. Okay. We're going to make some chicken keto recipes this afternoon and kind of just invented them 
last night on this piece of paper. I wrote different ideas and uh, one thing that I want to do is make all kinds of different recipes instead of making one uh, or many of the same recipe. It's actually a lot faster to make many of the same recipe and I would normally <laughs> gear more towards that. But because it's my first time experimenting with keto freezer meals, I actually want to give my husband a lot of variety and let him pick which ones are the favorites. And then out of those favorites, I can recreate those and make like a whole bunch at one time. And that'll be faster and easier. I just thought this would be a really fun way to go, give him lots of variety and see what works. I kind of enjoy inventing recipes. It's one of my favorite things. So um, what I did is um, I've got the chicken that he picked up yesterday and then the rest of everything else is mostly what was left over when we were doing meals yesterday with the exception of one or two items everything else was left over from what we prepped yesterday again to save time and money so I have taken these medium size resealable bags oh man I meant to use the reusable ones. So this one is empty. I'll grab a reusable one. There. Um, unfortunately for the others, I've already filled them, so they will have to be the um, just the regular plastic ones. But anyway, this one I just added the bacon that we had left from the keto chili yesterday, and uh, chopped that into here. And then this one we've got some of those leftover mushrooms and some of the leftover onions that we chopped and again mushrooms and onions and in this big one mushrooms and onions and then i've also sliced some zucchini or just cubed some zucchini and jalapeno and again zucchini is what we had left over from one of the meals we were making yesterday i think that was also the chili and then we had opened a can of diced tomatoes for the taco casserole so I'm going to use the rest of that. I know that with keto, you have to be really careful with the tomatoes, but this is going to go in our large recipe. So it should be, considering it's about half a can, half a 14 ounce can, this is not gonna be very many tomatoes at all. So I'll just toss that in right now and get it out of the way. And the rest of the things are odds and sods that I had in my fridge. So this should work really great. Um, we're going to just open the chicken. Before I do that, I have to tell you guys something. Okay, I discovered when I was taking those pancakes that we made earlier and putting them from the baking sheet into their own bag to put back in the freezer, that keto pancakes stick to the cookie sheet. So. If you're going to use my trick and lay them out flat and freeze them flat, then I would suggest that you put parchment paper down first because I had to kind of pry them off and some of them, or a little bit of each of them, stayed on the tray. So not ideal, and that doesn't happen with my regular pancakes, but it did happen with this. So in each of these, so I've got one, two, three, four, and I'll grab one more. Five. So in each of these five bags, I'm going to add um, a chicken breast. So these are just boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'm just adding one because it's only for my husband. And the nice thing about these meals is that he's going to be able to either keep them in a skillet, all of them will work in a skillet, or we have like a small oval ramekin um, casserole dish thing that's just perfect size for one chicken breast and some sauce so he can heat it in the oven if he'd prefer so either way will work and then he can eat that with some vegetables or whatever else keto people eat <laughs> okay um so i'm going to go ahead and put the chicken breasts one in each of these five bags and get my hands a little yucky go wash my hands and then i'll show you what we're filling them with So in the one with the bacon, I want to make kind of a jalapeno popper idea. I think that will be delicious. Actually, keto or no keto, I think that would be good. So I'm going to add some cream cheese, 
some jalapeno and some um, cheddar cheese. Actually, I don't have cheddar, so I'm adding some more of that habanero. Hopefully, <laughs> the combination of the jalapeno and the habanero cheese won't be too spicy, but okay. So I'm just adding a few cubes of cream cheese and as the chicken cooks, those will melt and form into a sauce. So you don't really have to worry right now. If you want, you can squish it all together and help that kind of separate, but it's not required. Okay, so I think about that is good probably very generous on the cream cheese and now we've got our jalapenos that are fairly finely diced and our cheese and quick as that we've got one chicken meal done. So it's got the bacon, chicken, jalapeno, cream cheese, and cheddar cheese. I should add a little salt and pepper just because actually I'll add it to all of them. Always faster to do things in kind of an assembly line fashion. And again, you want to remove all the air that you can. I hope I'm not sounding like a broken record. It's just really important to get that air out. And then I'm just going to squish it. I had softened the cream cheese at room temperature before so that it would be really easy to work with. And there, it's already all squashed together. So we've got that one and I'll label these so he knows what they are and how to cook them. And then this one is our first one with the mustard, or sorry, not mustard, mushrooms and onions. And so I was thinking we're going to do um, spinach in this one. And I had originally thought that we could do some lemon juice, but apparently with keto, citrus is a no-no. So we're just going to keep this one really simple and add some basil, which I forgot, hold on. Because I'm new to keto recipes and especially keto freezer meals, if you have any really good keto recipes that you think I could turn into a freezer meal fairly easily, can you pop the links to those in the comments? I would love to be able to get a better repertoire. <laughs> so I'm going to add some heavy cream into this. So again, our 33% milk fat whipping cream, I'm gonna pour some in there and that will wilt with this, or that will allow the spinach to wilt and make a really nice sauce on that chicken. So this is going to be a very simple meal and it's already done. Just wanna squish it together. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to make this next one into Let's see, um, chicken, mushrooms, onion, cream cheese. So let's add some cream cheese, garlic, and olive oil. And rosemary, okay, grabbing the olive oil. Apparently on keto, you need to have fats. So I'm trying to be mindful of that as I'm thinking of these recipes. So this one, you've got the fat from the olive oil. Okay, and we're gonna add some rosemary, which will go nicely with the mushrooms. 
and chicken. Really, rosemary goes well with chicken. And garlic. Another recipe done. I have to say, I'm kind of thinking in the back of my head as I put these together, I'm like, oh, day one, day two, I've got 16 chilies, so that's 16 days. And then I think probably have about 12 days from those meatballs. So kind of thinking might with the taco casserole, depending, might be making a month's worth of meals for him or more depends on yeah how many of our regular meals can be kind of ketoized at the same time okay um next one is chicken garlic spinach okay gonna put a fair bit of the spinach because it wilts down into almost nothing so spinach and matzo cheese and then we already did our salt and pepper so I'm going to add ranch seasoning and I think this will be a really delicious chicken okay where did I put that ranch? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, for the last one, we're going to do pesto, matzo, olive oil. And again, <laughs> that's one that I was going to add lemon juice to because matzo and lemon juice go really nicely together. And um, you know what? I feel like this one needs some olive oil. It needs some liquid in there. Sorry about the no measuring. Since I was just making the recipes by writing down random ingredients that I thought would work, I didn't put measurements and I'm not really one to measure all that much anyway. So um, I guess if you're looking for exact measurements, that's another cooking show. Although the things that I do have actual measurements for, I will put the recipes down below in the description. So you can look for that if you're someone that needs exact measurements. And if you are, I apologize. I just um, kind of cook by feel, but then when I am figuring out uh, how to write out a recipe, then I do go through and make sure and measure everything and put the right ingredients so that other people can recreate what I've done. Okay, so. It is harder to get the air out of these, I find, but there we go. So this one is that pesto matzo chicken. That is done. And now we're going to make a full meal with the chicken thighs. So I have six, nine chicken thighs in there. We're gonna be adding them to this bag. So we've got some onions, some mushrooms, that half a can of canned tomatoes. We're going to add some garlic. This is gonna be a full meal. You can bake this in a casserole dish and feed the whole family. So now we've got some broccoli and cauliflower. Nope, I lied, it's just broccoli. I debated on getting the broccoli and cauliflower mix, but I got just the broccoli. So I'm going to add 
a lot of that and zucchini so here we go with the zucchini and what else might as well do salt and pepper since they're here now i'll have to look at my list and see what i was planning i think i was going to add some heavy cream and yep olive oil heavy cream and matzo cheese okay so there's your fats right and this is probably fat too again no idea what I'm doing when it comes to keto but um, and that matzo cheese I'm to, I don't want to put it in. I'm going to put it in a separate bag and staple it on so that it can be topped with the matzo cheese. And actually, I will probably combine a little bit of Parmesan in that bag because I have some and that way it'll make a really nice topping and with the Parmesan in there, it'll crisp up a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let me just see if this is enough of a sauce. I'm not loving. It's not coating everything. So let me give it a shake and I'll decide what I'm gonna do. Okay, now that's really not bad. That's coating things pretty well, but we still have to add the chicken. So we'll see how it looks at the end and I can always add more of the whipping cream, olive oil, you know, the squishy things. Okay, I'm gonna add the chicken now. Be right back. Okay, so we're just gonna make our little bag of cheese to staple on the top. Whenever you staple a bag to the top, you wanna do it above the seal, of course, so that you don't have any leakage. And then you wanna take the bag off on a staple out on the day that you are going to bake it. And then you just put the rest in the oven and then towards the end, you just top it with the cheese, put it back in the oven uncovered and the cheese will brown and you will have a very delicious meal. I'm gonna just put the rest in there. Okay. So again, taking the air out of the bag And this one, it's got our chicken thighs in there. Chicken thighs are a little bit more tender. And so I have read that a lot of people doing keto prefer thighs to breasts. Okay. I'm gonna give this a really good squish and combine it. So as I was squishing that together, I thought, you know, there's a tiny bit of tomato in here. There's broccoli, zucchini, kind of feels, and mushrooms, onions. It feels Italian to me. So I'm adding some Italian seasoning. And I think this is gonna be the thing that really puts this dish over the top. So I'm adding a tiny bit more of the heavy cream. And actually that was probably a little more than a tiny bit more. And I'm gonna add a little more garlic too because, you know, now that we're going with the Italian theme, might as well. Oh, and you know, what's more Italian than olive oil? Okay. That is it. So we have made an awful lot of keto meals uh, in the last two days. And we'll see if you guys give me some ideas for some better or more tried and true keto meals, then I will do another keto uh, freezer meal video and show you those new creations. So again, just pop your ideas in the comments. 
If you're looking for other great meal ideas and ways to save time in the kitchen, then I invite you to subscribe. Thanks so much for joining me today and happy cooking.